Hi guys, Chris here, back with the Tech Last T Book 11. Now, if you've seen my other video, you would have seen that I covered most of the things important, I think, in Android. And I really did like the Android side of this tablet because the ROM is a stock ROM. It performed really well, very quick, really good. And now this is the Windows side of things here that I'm going to cover in this particular clip. And just wanted to comment that uh, the keyboard you see here is not the official Tech Last keyboard. Now, the docking mechanism, should I say, the port on the bottom is very common. The 5-pin Pogo port is literally on most of the tablet 2-in-1s now. They have that port, but what does change is the actual little prongs here, the supports, you could say, that it clips into. Now, this is an old Peepo W1S keyboard, and it actually works on it, so you can use it as the fold-up keyboard. It's not a bad keyboard, but it's not really for this model. You can see that it's a little short either side, and you don't get those two USB 2 ports that you do on the official one. The official one has a USB port here and one on the other side. But it's a fixed, hard-style keyboard. This also doubles up as a case, and I mean, it, it works okay. But I'm just using it for the purposes of this review, really. So, first up, here are the eMMC speeds. Now, it's a... A Hynix eMMC, it's a proper brand eMMC, it's not an N brand. Performance is a little slow there, and that's probably because, if you can see, maybe you can't actually with the camera, uh, that the driver is 94% full, so it's starting to get quite full there. And that probably has a bit of an impact there on the speeds when I benchmark this. Uh, the screen I'm quite happy with, actually. This has to be definitely one of the better 1080p screens that I have seen and I'm pretty sure it's the same exact screen that the old X10 HD 3G from TechLast had and all in all it's a good screen got nice colors good blacks good viewing angles and overall I think a lot of people will be happy with this screen because I've seen other 1080p screens that tend to be a little bit uh, less colorful I could say and that's 100% brightness which is approximately 250 uh, Lux there, which which is okay. So I'm just going to put it back to 50% brightness at the moment. Most of the time I just use it on 50% brightness, and that is good. So I've gone through the usual benchmarks. I uh, tested out the wireless speed here. The result for the Realtek wireless chipset it has is quite good. That is very good, actually, because my desktop gets around 50 megabits per second and around 26, 25 upload. So very good result there. Uh, now, some of these scores here are a little low, as you'll see. The PC Mark 7 one isn't. It's not too bad, considering it's an Atom X5Z8300. And the Geekbench 3 score. Okay, I mean, it could be a little higher on the multi-core score there. And here's the iStorm Extreme score, where we see lower scores than normal. Now, iStorm Extreme, for this type of chipset, should be a bit higher there. Now, I don't know what was going on. I did retest it, and more or less, it's getting around 10,000. CloudGate 1.1. This score is good for the Atom Z8300. Uh, the Icestorm 1.2 score should be about 15,000. So it's scoring again a little less, but I think it's a Windows kind of thing because definitely... The benchmarks when I ran the Android test and that video, things went really well in terms of benchmark scores. They were high. They were they were what you would expect, even maybe slightly more for this chipset, the four gigabytes of, of RAM there. Now, other couple of things just to point out, the device manager, okay, I already mentioned that, I think, the, the Hynix drive that's in there, and I think I already did mention that, didn't I, that Realtek the wireless but if you want more details on that one it's the chipset that we do see literally everywhere that you can see that it uh it's just a single band one we're still only getting single band 2.4 gigahertz only on these tablets out of china um so overall the build quality is good i'm quite pleased with it and i will give you a quick test of the the speakers too and they are fine, really. They're not too bad, as you'll hear in just a moment. And I'm finding the screen touch response 
not bad at all. Accuracy is good. I just jump on here into YouTube. And Edge, of course, is very smooth, super smooth. No problems at all there. Now, Chrome, I don't tend to use Chrome on the Atoms uh, because it's a little more choppy and not really as fast. It just needs really a minimum, I, I think, personally, a Core M in a tablet to run Chrome nice and smooth. It has improved in time. It used to be really bad, but now it's getting better. So have a look here at carbon-based lifeforms just to test out these speakers. Alright, so the speakers are okay, they're nothing wonderful, but they do have a tiny little hint of bass there. Not sure whether the microphone I'm using would actually pick that up or not, but uh, it's not bad. Uh, they could possibly be a little louder, but they're definitely not the worst I have heard. Now, in terms of battery life, uh, you're looking approximately four to five hours, depending on what you're doing. Now, I have been doing a few benchmarks and things. At the moment, since 98% battery life, I've got an hour and a half. I'm at 82%, which isn't at all bad. But my full run time, it's giving me an estimate about five hours. Now, I have actually run it right down to, to, uh, to I think, what, 7% when it turns off. And I got uh, just over four and a half hours. And one other thing, too, that very important, that the USB 2 port will actually power by itself without needing a power hub, an external 2.5 hard drive. So that is really good to see because some of the other tablets that we had from TechLast, they couldn't do that at all, which is really annoying, but that pops up and it works. So my, this is my one terabyte Western Digital Drive, no problems. So I won't go into any gaming tests in this video here because I've tested out the Atom X5 Z8300 countless times now of gaming and it'll play most of the games, all the store games will run fine apart from Modern Combat 5, that's a very demanding game and that just tends to lag out completely. Um, Counter-Strike, you can get lower settings, lower resolution, yeah, okay, playable frame rates just... But have a look at some of the other videos I do have online if you want to get an idea of how the Atom X5 performs. But so far, this tablet, I think it is um, a good tablet, decent tablet. The annoying things I don't like, as I mentioned in the other videos, is the port location is really just very odd the way they have spaced it out. So we've got a 3.5 millimeter jack, the uh, USB 2, micro USB 2 port there, and then our HDMI right there on the top awkward placement and a little awkward for charging and i just don't like it at all i don't know why they've done that uh, at least we do have the speakers left and right either side for good stereo separation and the yeah the, the, the fit and finish of it is good it, it all matches up nicely it does feel very nice in hand with the uh, metal rear housing on it and the buttons on the top are made out of plastic but it's typical tech last build quality that tends to be one of the better ones, definitely from the, the tablets that come out of China. So this is all I'm going to cover in this particular video on the T-Book 11. Do stay tuned to the channel, and I might have more up and coming on this model, but definitely other ones very shortly. So keep an eye out for those. Bye for now.